maybe they should shut the fuck up and start acting normal and realize that there are only two genders. Wow, such empirical knowledge right there. It's called the cringe channel. It's like, it's like the pool of hate on Facebook. Can you show it to me? The word I prefer is nuclear holocaust. They should call themselves fucking faggots. Oh, that's nice. Pair of dumbasses. Pair of dumbasses. White, white people. people. I'm You're not white. <laughs> we call them mentally handicapped. There's so much ableism in this as well. What was that a comment from a trans person? It says they give transgenders a bad name and we already have it rough with people. It's not bag and faggot. That's nice. My homie Adolf wouldn't have any of this shit. Oh, wow. <laughs> Ask Tickler's Faggots fan club. Trick question. Non-binary people don't have lovers. But buddies. Cancer. That's a perfect name. How do you feel about getting so much hate? Are you used to it? I'm very used to it, actually. In, so, on this scale? I mean, this is like 600 pages of hate and growing. Anybody who has anything to do with, like, social justice or human rights gets a lot of shit like this. Yeah, I guess so. I'm just not used to reading the comments. I should probably stop this. Sure I'm just going to carry on chopping vegetables. <laughs> so. I, I just honestly want to make a video now where I just scroll down and people can read the comments. Like, oh, yeah. No, do that. I'm really not used to this amount of hate. Yeah. It just feels really weird. Like, you know, obviously, I, I have, like, I think I have a really idealistic view of the world and mm. yeah this is the pit of hell that i've just been looking at like what i'm mostly concerned about with this whole thing is uh, that people feel they need to actually say this yeah uh, and they yeah they feel they need to go out of the way and comment those hateful things and share it and stuff and i just wonder what do these people do in their lives like yeah why do they feel the need to do it why are they so threatened? Like yeah, gender? yeah, and and what's the gain? What is it? What's the gain out of this? Uh, I just feel like these people must be really sad, and they just must be really going through something terrible, and they just are not happy with themselves, and that's why they try to put other people down. I've got like a really crappy eye because I think I'm like stressed out and stuff so I'm just like putting a, a hot compress on my eye at the moment. I'm leaving this one. Mm -hmm. Honestly most of the things that people say on those comments or whatever is comments that we have heard before. I heard before and some of them are even in our video. Yeah. That we are releasing oh like literally God, so some true. of those things are in there. How are you? Fabulous, fabulous. But I've been really annoyed about trans this, trans that. It's just a trend, darling. It's just a trend. Some sort of fad, isn't it? All they're really doing is just trying to deceive people. Can't man up, can't be a man, decide to be a woman. Disgusting. Why go through all this and be trans when you can just be gay? They've got to be trans. It's sexual. I think they're taking the easy way out. It's like the fall of the morals in society, you know? Yes, darling. First Conchita wins Eurovision, then oh, Caitlyn Jenner comes. I know, darling. It's just not normal. And all they want is to get a tiny bit of attention. <laughs> attention seekers. Trying to get attention? Really? If by attention you mean getting disowned, not getting proper health care, being harassed, being berated, all that stuff, then yes, I am trying to get attention. Goodness gracious me, they live amongst us. Social media can go to such extremes where one moment you're voted the sexiest woman of Iceland and the next you're receiving 7,000 comments of hate. At the time, we weren't even living in the same country and Fox had to head back to the UK so we didn't really have the time to deal with it or process the whole thing. After Fox left, I went to visit my parents. They live on a remote farm in rural Iceland and they spoke for the first time on camera about me being a non-binary trans person.
Það var búið að segja mér áður en ég hérna, tók saman við hana, ég myndi eignast tvo stráka og eina stelpu, en það kom mér ekkert óvart, raunniður, sko. Mér fannst það allt í lagi ef að þú vildir vera í fjölmi, en ég skildi samt ekki, þú veist að þú nettir að vera í fjölmiðum og vildi vera svona opuðbæð persóna, en, en þú vildi vera opuðbæð persóna og þannig, veist, að þá fannst mér hann bara allt í lagi þín vegna, þú veist. Mér var bara stolt að því sem þú veist að gera. Já, ég var það náttúrulega líka, sko, mér fannst það svona að vera bara svona, komið lengra í lífinu heldur en ég áttaði mig á, sko, þegar að þegar þú fór að vera, þú stóður ábrændi. Og þá fjast þú loksins að vera svo sem þú vildir vera, sko. Þú veist, þú varst alltaf í felum og ég sá alveg þið leið ekki vel, en þú veist, loksins varstu svo sem þú vildir vera og þá fórst að blómstra. Þú virkaði, sko, alveg hamingi sem krakki hangur til svona 12-13 ára eða eitthvað, þá svona fórst að breytast og virkaði mjög hamingi svo mátt, þú veist, því ég gekk vel að læra og allt, en það var samt alltaf eitthvað sem vantaði. Svo lengi oft við það, sko, bara dunda sér. Og hún dunda þessu svo mikið ein, en svo þú var svona 13 ára, þá fórst að fara í tölvuna og spila tölvuleiki og þá varst alltaf kona í leikjónum og ég var oftast að hugsa, af hverju er hún alltaf kona? En þú sagðir enda við mig þegar þú varst fjóra ára, mamma, ég er kona. Sko, ég var spurð að því um daginn, hvers vegna að þú hefði farið út í það að fara í þetta leiðrindingarferli, þú væri strákur, breyta þér í stúlku og svo vildur þú hvorki vera strákur eða stelpa. Kannski skilja sömur það ekki og munu aldrei skilja það, ég veit það ekki. Skilja þið Þú veist, þetta er eitthvað sem hann sko, maður hefur ekki heyrt áður. Ég skil og vilt vera svona en kannski skil ekki hvers vegna eða þú veist, ég veit ekki alveg hvernig ég útskilaði fyrir þér. Þetta var svona nýjasta útspilið það, sko, en ég er ekki alveg búin að komast gegnum þetta. Ég held að þetta snýrið allt saman um það að verða sko, alveg kona, sko, þannig að ég er ekki alveg búin að þessu. En það er allt í lagi mín vegna, sko, fólk verður bara að fá að vera eins og Nú ef að fólk getur ekki tekið mann eins og þér, þá getur það bara átt sig. I'm very proud of Ugla. And you too. Fox. I am very proud too. For both of you. Both of you. Because you too have a good life. Já. Það er fyrir mestu. Þú sér það mikið svo. Out of all the different challenges that non-binary people face, the fact that we aren't legally recognized and can't get our ID documents changed remains as one of the most obvious ones. Al and I wondered how this might affect people's right to get married. We're here to meet Shannon, who is a non-binary person of the cloth, and hopefully they're going to explain to us whether we can get married as non-binary. My name is Shannon. I have always been non-binary, but although I've only had that label for the, the last sort of six, seven years, I am nearly 61 years of age. As a lot of people sort of think that non-binary is this new concept and it's something that all these teenagers are jumping on the bandwagon with, that is not the case. And I am not the only person who is later in life that identifies as, as non-binary. We didn't have the vocabulary before to be able to speak about ourselves in that way, but we've always known that we didn't fit into uh, the categories that society was offering us of uh, being either male or female. Being able to identify in this way, to, to actually have a label to attach to how I understood myself. It was only when I discovered that there was such a thing as, as non-binary that I suddenly found, oh, yeah, I, I'm at home. Hi. Hi. Oh, lovely. We have a question for mm -hmm. you. We would like to know if it's possible for us to get married as non-binary. I wish I could say yes, but unfortunately not in the UK. The UK only recognises two genders, male and female, and the law stipulates that you either have to be a male and female couple, or a male and male couple, or a female and female couple in, in order to enter into marriage. You can't even have a civil partnership because that also requires people to identify as the same gender and within the, the binary structure. So as things stand at the moment, as non-binary people, you, you you can't actually enter into that. Okay, well that's a disappointment. There are churches who would be very happy to bless your relationship. Of course that won't offer any legal protections or be legally binding in any way. And of course 
the, the fight for same-sex marriage was all about trying to ensure that same-sex couples had the same legal protections as heterosexual couples and obviously at some point uh, this really needs to change so that non-binary couples can also share in those same protections and legal rights and responsibilities. Thank you for clarifying that for us and well, thank you so much, what a pleasure. Let's hope that we can change yeah. that in the years to come. Yeah, too right, thank you. Thank, thank you. you for coming, thank lovely you. to see you yeah. again. See and you. take a cake as well. From church to state, religion to politics, the next step on our journey was Parliament. Now that we know we can't get married, we wanted to speak with the lawmakers. I mean, it is definitely true that a lot of the roots of marriage are based in these like stereotypical gendered roles of a man owning a woman, of a woman only having rights to property through a man. And it seems quite surreal that in the 21st century we've come so far and we've fought for the right to be married in the LGBT or LGB community at least. And yet there's not enough recognition of the fact that some people want to choose to identify in different ways and marriage should have adapted to allow that as well. There are still many areas that, that we need to look into and, and you know, we're looking at that in, from a Scottish perspective on, on best practice uh, and we're undertaking a review at the moment to look specifically how we can change the law so that it, you know, it recognises everybody in whatever way they identify and I think that's really important. I think there's a lot to be positive about as, as Angela says, particularly in Scotland because we really, you know, we, we don't have power over all aspects but what we do have power over we're going to do our best to change. That's very positive, it's been so wonderful chatting with you both, thank you so much, pleasure. I really appreciate yeah, it, thank pleasure. you. Thank, thank you, you. Thank you so much. Thank you. So that was a very interesting chat. Yeah, wasn't it? it was, there seems to be a lot going on, they actually revealed a lot of cool things that's going on. Yeah. Uh, but still it's such a slow it's a change. slow process yeah. and it's such a shame because we need things to move forward quite quickly and yeah. to them it seems like nothing's going to really happen in the next no. few years which is very disappointing considering there's other countries that are miles ahead yeah why can't we be leading the way yeah the quest continues <laughs> the quest continues. <laughs> feeling a bit hopeless we decided to head home and think about what would be our next step so i've been thinking about this whole marriage thing and the fact that we couldn't get married even if we wanted to. I'm thinking maybe we could do a protest wedding and, um, and just host a wedding and raise awareness that not everybody can actually get married in the UK. Yeah, it's a good idea. <laughs> is this where I propose to you? <laughs> <laughs> I guess it is. <laughs> Want to get protest married? Yeah, yeah I do. <laughs>